events ken what is going on well then we've got stuff for you as we will every other week um yes well here's what's happening well in disneyland the last uh, the last two weeks yeah, yeah. So this is yeah. something new we're gonna try um yeah. this is the first thing you'll you'll receive is um we're gonna try doing a show every week i kind of put this out to our patreons um so they know about it um so if you want to know things right away, join our Patreon. Um, we're going to try something new where we're just going to put current events on one week and then the main topic another week. So you're going to have the sweep spot every week. That's right. You need to make it a weekly habit, folks. <laughs> weekly habit. And that way, in theory, the episodes will be shorter then. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It'll still For be a fast-paced world. So you'll get your fix every week and it won't take as long. That's so there right. you go. All right. And by the know. way, you can you, you can join us for the current events. Um, oh yeah. You know by by supporting us through the Patreon. So mm -hmm. uh, we'll be doing that the next time. So in, in two weeks from now. Maybe. Um, yeah, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe we do that about once a month. About yeah, a month. yeah, we do. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Anyway. Well, um, the what uh, this is for? Did you already say it's for the week of uh, July? We're off to a great start here. <laughs> um, well, as we're recording, I'll mm -hmm. tell you how the sausage is made, folks. Right. It is July 22nd. So this is for the pre the, the, the two weeks leading up to July 22nd. Awesome. So, all right. Well, I'm looking 22, forward to it. Yeah. All right. So what happens in the middle, middle of July, Lynn? We have Disneyland's anniversary. Mm -hmm. So... Um, Another one. I I didn't find anything on the Disney Parks blog about it. Um, it it's and it's year sixty seven. So maybe they didn't know. You know, I'm sure maybe they're planning a really really. <laughs> maybe they didn't know. That was great. All right. Uh, <laughs> um. <laughs> sorry, folks. I'm I must right. regain my composure. Um, maybe they're planning a huge thing for the sixty eighth uh, anniversary. Right. But anyway. Uh, Disneyland, of course, opened July 17th or July 18th, depending on who you ask. It's not because there was nobody there on July 17th. That was just a uh, that was a an invited guest only event that a lot of people crashed, and it was it was the big televised spectacle. But anyway, so Laughing Place has a report with videos. Uh, Disneyland celebrates 67 years of magic. Uh, they should take a couple of years away from that. Oh, now or one year, or however long they were closed. <laughs> Oh, like yeah, six, minus. Six <laughs> yeah. Uh, this, yesterday marked, this is from July 18th, yesterday marked the 67th anniversary of Disneyland Park, Walt Disney's original Magic Kingdom in Anaheim, California. And if you go and you click through on the links, of course, we will have all these links on our website, uh, the current events section of the website. If you go to thesweepspot.com, you can click through it and see the whole thing so you can watch the videos and mm -hmm. All that sort of thing. Um, yeah, there were a lot of people making a big deal because they didn't play Walt Disney's opening speech. Hmm. And so people are wondering if this is a conspiracy to remove Walt. Uh -oh. but, really? People are saying that? Yeah. Oh, or, or, if, or if they just forgot, you know. Uh, or didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. It reminds me. I knew some. I knew somebody that was convinced. Uh, well, I don't know if they were convinced, but they floated the idea that uh, when Light Magic uh, mm -hmm. what happened in 1997, they had these pixie characters on Light Magic, mm -hmm. and this person floated the idea that maybe they're getting rid. Maybe they're getting ready to pull all of Disney out of Disneyland and just, you know, they'll pull the Disney characters out and they'll just have these pixies. Uh -oh. And they can they can sell it off, you know. It didn't happen, but um, anyway, uh, wow. yeah, I didn't really subscribe to that idea, but there you go. Well, what about when you go and you drive to the resort and you park? How do you remember where your car is? Well, Apple Play 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 uh, Apple or whatever your Google. Oh, oh no, yeah. no. <laughs> Okay. Disneyland Car Finder helps remember where you park. And this is Brady McDonald reporting in the Orange County Registry. He says Disney's new car locator feature will debut later this year on the Disneyland app. The Car Finder feature launches later this summer at the Walt Disney World Resort in Florida. The free feature uses location technology on your, your smartphone to save your parking details and help you find your car later. You'll need to enable Bluetooth um, and location services as well as notifications for the car finder feature to work best. Also, you have to use Lightning Lane uh, for, it to, for it to work best. Otherwise, it's really slow. I, I added that last part. Um, <laughs> now, you want, you want to find your car, buddy? That's going to be another 30 bucks. Uh, no. Uh, oh, we don't know where it is. <laughs> as he says, as he says later in here, as a longtime theme park reporter, I've heard many stories through the years about Disneyland visitors who couldn't find their parked cars after a long day at the parks. Disneyland security guards and Good Samaritans have given rides around the garages to visitors searching for their lost vehicles. Disneyland's parking staff can estimate where cars should be parked based on a visitor's arrival time. I've seen families hopelessly wandering the parking structures at night, clicking their car remotes in hopes of hearing their car horn and locating their lost car. The story I've heard the most involves truly tired souls who get on the Toy Story lot tram when their car is parked at the Mickey and Friends or Pixar Pals garages or vice versa. Um, and as he finishes off the article he says my surefire tip for remembering where I parked my car at Disneyland is take a photo with my smartphone of the color-coded lane markers on the pillars in the garages and street lights in the lots that system never fails me as long as I don't lose my phone on the Incredicoaster uh, I wonder if it'll help you locate your car if it's stolen Ooh. that never happens right I don't know uh, well, if you if you if you don't have access to the Orange County Register, uh, LaughingPlace.com also covers that story in full. And uh, well, like I said, we'll have those links. Uh, what do you think about that, Lynn? Uh, car locator. That's good, right? As long as you can get reception in that parking yeah. structure. But yes, um, anything to make it easier for people to to visit the park and leave the park. Yeah. Um, no, that's good. I, I mean, they have the app. They might as well use it for technology they have. And... Yeah. Cool. Uh, hey, why Disneyland turned the Jungle Cruise River pink? Uh, it was a fundraiser. Uh -huh. uh, it's another Brady McDonald's story reporting. I saw some pictures about this online, and it says select locations at Disneyland underwent water treatment on Monday, July 18th. That resulted in the water turning a purple-pink tint, according to Disneyland officials. No Disneyland guests rode on the Jungle Cruise attraction during the temporary water treatment process, according to Disneyland officials. The Jungle Cruise was closed for a short period of time on Monday as part of a standard water treatment process used to treat bodies of water throughout the Disneyland Resort. The pink waters dissipated within a few hours, and the attraction returned to normal operation later in the day. Sounds kind of weird they would do that in the middle of the day. Yeah, why wouldn't you do that at night? Um, the Jungle Cruise River turned pink around 3 p.m. on Monday, and uh, that's 
As he, well, there might be a clue because the the um, the article ends with Sean Patrick, a computer programmer from Pismo Beach, speculated on Twitter that the pink stuff in the Jungle Cruise River could be potassium permanganate, a chemical used to treat wastewater, combat rust buildup, and remove rotten egg smells from the water. So maybe it was smelling bad. I mean, the uh, water gets treated. Yeah, there's an old e-ticket. Well, they're all, of course, all e-ticket magazines are old. But um, there's an e-ticket that details the water treatment process. Like, uh, yeah, you know, all the waterways, yeah. Yeah, it, 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 how they're all connected. All the green water, I call it, is connected. And it used to be much more apparent that it was all connected, you know, back before everything was built up at Disneyland. But the treatment was right there behind um, Casey Jr., you know. Oh, is that what that is there? Yeah, that's what that by was the, back then. By the freight cage, kind of. Right, and it would get pumped over to where the motorboats used to be. Mm-hmm. And then from there, it would go down, you know, make its way down towards the castle, blah, blah, blah. And, nice. Yeah. We had to do a whole episode on that. We could. Yeah. We could. Uh, well, I thought this already happened, but here it is again. Another Bertie McDonald story from the Orange County Register. Uh, Disneyland adds Cal State Fullerton and Fullerton College to free Aspire education program. And for those of you who don't know, Fullerton is directly north of the city of Anaheim. And so Cal State Fullerton is often called Cal State Disneyland. Uh, and as it says here, the $150 million Disney Aspire program that has allowed thousands of Disneyland employees to get a free college education while taking courses online now offers something new, in-person classes. Hmm, maybe the prior report was just that they were going to do this, and now this is, hey, they're doing it now. Oh, yeah. You know, I don't know. Disneyland has added California State University Fullerton and Fullerton College to its network of schools that offer in-person education to Disneyland hourly employees through Disney's Aspire program. The Disney Aspire program covers 100% of tuition, fees and books at network schools for full-time and part-time hourly Disneyland cast members. Wow. You know, uh, why, where was that when I was, you know, when I was there? Yeah. Um, well, there's more to the story, though. As Dusty Sage over at MiceChat.com points out in a piece called Disneyland News, Three Strikes and You're Out. He says there's good news and bad news for Disneyland cast members today. Mm. We'll start with the good news. And he talks about the Disney Aspire program. Now, does, doesn't that program sound great? Wouldn't you like to have, you know, done something like that? Yeah, I would have. Yeah, yeah. That, w- that would have been great. Um, and But as Dusty continues in the story here, he says, Unfortunately, it wouldn't do you much good to do those in-person classes if Disneyland won't give you the days off you need for coursework and exams. The Disneyland Resort now employs well over 30,000 cast members. About one-third of that cast is new, and turnover among the existing cast is the highest in recent memory. All of that makes staffing and training more important than ever. Many ca- many new casts don't even finish their training or probationary period before quitting or just failing to show up. And due to the ongoing health crisis, many more casts are gone for long periods of time, often without adequate backup staff to fill the void. This is one reason why restaurant reservations get canceled and locations that uh, should be operating end up opening late, closing early, or never opening for the day. Uh, further down, he says, the situation isn't specifically to, specific to Disney. Almost all companies in Southern California are fighting over a dwindling pool of available labor, especially for entry-level jobs such as Disneyland Resort primary, what the, the Disneyland Resort primarily offers. Generally, a company that needs more employees will offer, a, offer higher pay, more flexibility, and or add specific special perks to entice job applicants. I mean, I can tell you, um, living in Anaheim, yeah. everywhere I go, there's there's help wanted signs everywhere. Yeah, same and, here. You know, it's like that in Utah too. Yeah. And people can find, you know, they can find higher paying work than Disney. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he continues here, but Disney is going a different route. <laughs> Disneyland scraps point system for three strikes HR policy. 
Those who work full-time in jobs, uh, full-time jobs in office settings will be familiar with a three or four strike HR system which escalates reprimands for attendance violations before terminating an employee. While it's never fun to be given a warning by your manager, it's an established and widespread system that mostly works for full-time employees being paid a living wage. The basic idea is to show up to work if you don't want to lose your job. But such policies fail, fall apart when you deal with low-wage and part-time workers because they often have special scheduling needs arising from working multiple jobs or juggling school and often childcare as well. As a result of its low-wage and mostly part-time workforce, Disneyland has long adopted a more complicated but also more flexible point system instead of a severe three strike system for attendance issues and here's where i'll insert you know we come we, we talk about this in our first book uh-huh. the the it's a pretty generous the, the point system was pretty generous yeah uh the way it ended i mean it, even, it got even more because of i think in part because of state law it be, got uh-huh. even more generous after we left yeah and like you could i mean you could be there you, you could basically miss four days like a month for like a year before you started running into any trouble <laughs> you know yeah, and if you're on four tens you could have off your entire week yeah. you know you just you just call in sick and or call in dependent or call in whatever you know whatever the yeah, uh, yeah. designations were uh, it says the current system allowed enough points for missing a few shifts and employees were given enough points to deal with most scheduling conflicts with other jobs or schools and an employee would only um, incur points for the first day of a multi-day illness. But all of that will be out the window in October as Disneyland does away with flexibility and adopts the more strict corporate-style HR strike system, even for lower-wage and part-time theme park workers. Under the new HR system, newer employees would be fired after their third warning verbal written and then final warning an extra warning is allowed for employees with five or more years of service disney offers the minimum amount of sick time allowable by california law after that the warnings begin in normal times that might not be enough um, sick time for most employees but not in extraordinary times Okay, let me reread that again. In normal times, that might be enough sick time for most employees, but not in extraordinary times such as these. You can imagine the reaction this news is generating among Disneyland workers who are walking the tightrope of more than one job or shifting school schedules. And single parents with kids have the most impossible task of figuring out how to deal with sick children and their own illnesses with only three strikes available per year one bout of a highly transmissible virus such as the ones going around now uh, making its way through your family and you'd be out of your job at disney well let, let, let's let's analyze this here yeah so because sometimes things are over exaggerated um so what what are they what are they saying they're saying that you can call in more than three times a year. You just can't get in trouble for more than three times, right? That I think that's what they're saying. It once yeah. I think they're saying that once you've used up your sick time, mm-hmm. you know, once you've used up your sick time, right? Uh, you know, well, of course, what that means, they're hourly employees. So, right. um, if you have used up your sick time, you're not getting paid, right? You know, you, you 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 can miss all week at work. You're just you're not getting paid. Right. So that was an incentive to show up. But um, when is it a violation, though? And I think it's after. I think it's after you've exhausted your your uh, oh. sick time. Oh, okay. But also, mm-hmm. what the article didn't get into um, is that you, if you're like late coming back for your lunch. Right, that's considered tardy, just as if you got there late for your shift. Right, you can, in fact, you can get two tardies in one day. Right, well, you can get you can get more than two tardies in one day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can be fired so, in one day. Um, so there you go. Um, but I don't know. 
We'll have to see. We'll have to ask some people that we know. But um, we'll have to see. How, well, like I said, the the point system was really really generous. Right. Probably too uh, generous, right? Because well, yeah. I mean, let's. Uh, <laughs> It was different for casual seasonal or casual regulars, mm-hmm. but if you were, you know, full time, if you were A or B, you know, you're full time. Right. Um, what it would do, I mean, you would accumulate the points, and they would drop off. Like a year later, they would drop off. Mm-hmm. So your trick was not to go over the limit in a year. But even if you did go over the limit in a year, the the first thing you got was a verbal, a verbal. Right. And then. If you still screwed up, you'd get a written reprimand, right. and then you start with a suspension, like a three-day what three-day suspension, right? Yeah, you know, yeah. suspended without pay, and then there was a five-day, mm-hmm. and a then, day then it was tw- no, then it was a termination. Now, yeah. but what often happened was, if you called in, called up, and talked to a manager, say, "Look, I really, really need today off," mm-hmm. you know, uh, if you did it. Like if, especially if you, it's hard to do for an opening shift. Right. But if you, if it was you were a closer and you were like, look, look, I really need to day off. You know, I don't want to have to call in sick. Uh, then they you know, sometimes they, they could sometimes grant you that day off, mm-hmm. so you wouldn't accumulate points. But it, like I said, it was really generous, and you, know, you could miss, you know, work every month. You could miss, you know, like I said, four days sometimes, yeah. and you know, every month before you for a year before you started. Minus now, one you, month, like you could do it, it once a look, month. Yeah. It doesn't look favorable on you. No, you know. <laughs> no. I mean, if you're if you're out, you know. <laughs> I was thinking of a story. I don't. I don't want to get into it right now. No, no, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I I think, and we'll have to find out as we get more details on this. But I think that um, some of the news story, you know, the news. Um, people that report the news uh, that we're reporting from, sometimes they uh, don't know all the details because um, they don't know what it was like before. Like you were saying, it was very generous. Now right, it's right. probably probably normal, like a normal workplace would be. It's not like they're tightening up more than what is normally expected of a workplace, right? Yeah, but Disneyland is kind of special. I mean... Mm-hmm. Especially depending on the pay. Right. I mean, how many people, <laughs> how many people there are, I, I think so many of the people there have other jobs mm-hmm, mm-hmm. or, you know, they do other work, whether it's freelance or whatever. Um, but if they have another actual, empl- like, well, they're an employee somewhere else, mm-hmm. it gets difficult because if both your jobs are demanding a certain, you know, you're going to be here on this day. Right. It's like, well, I can't do that, you know. Um, yeah. No, I'm not defending Disney. I just think that, um, I don't know, before we get up in arms over this whole thing, we need to kind of step back and look at what what is what it really is and how it's going to affect everyone. Well, to hear people talk, it's like, they're, you know, this is going to cause a lot of people to lose their jobs there and, you know, they're having tough enough time filling the ranks, and I'm thinking, well, that's true now, but if the economy is shifting, they might not have difficulty finding people. It depends. Maybe, you know, maybe all those help wanted signs are going to go away, and, you know, Disney's going to say, ha-ha, you know. But yeah. maybe this <laughs> is a way, you know how the saying is, thin the herd. Maybe this is a way to get the people that are not necessarily so um, dedicated um, and and, we're, and this kind of leads into something I think we're going to talk about for our bonus episode uh, that I'm thinking of uh, for this month, so don't miss that. All right. Okay. Well, uh, let's continue on here with the current events. Um, <laughs> yeah. They had floated. Uh, there was a city council member who floated uh, a tax, uh, and as Laughing Place knock on reports. Anaheim considering a 2% admissions tax on entertainment and sporting events. Now, let, before I continue with the story, I'll just point out that was July 14th. Uh, the subsequent, it, it was floated at an Anaheim City Council meeting. It went nowhere. I think. Okay. I think. I think just one. I think it's just the council member who floated it supported. I don't think the other four supported it. But um, oh, okay, so it's not. That's yeah, voted but, on but, but here's the kind of thing they're talking about. The Anaheim mm-hmm. City Council is considering asking voters about adding an entertainment tax, the potential 2% admissions to 2%, 2%, 2%, 2%, 2%, 2%, 2%, 2%, 2%, 2%, 2%, 2%, 2%, 2%, 2%, 2%, 2%, 2%, 2%, 2%,
2% admissions tax would apply to the Disneyland Resort as well as sporting events at Angel Stadium. The Angels have a provision in their lease agreement that they will receive a rent rebate for any entertainment tax collected. Um, the resolution is set to be discussed in the next... Blah, 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 blah. Okay. So, it, was, it, it wasn't even to impose a tax. It was to put it on the ballot. But yeah. 2%. It's like um, three bucks on a on a one day ticket. I did the math. But multiply yeah. it by you know you got a family of four and now right. it's like twelve bucks. Right, right. Um, but but you know. let's step back and um, you probably know the answer to this. Why why are they exempt from because um, as I'm planning people's trips um, for concierge, <laughs> um, as I'm planning people's trips uh, when I looked it was um, there's tax for. Uh, Walt Disney World's tickets. Yeah. And what, why is Disneyland exempt from that? There used to be, if you look at the old signage uh, mm -hmm. for prices, there used to be a tax. Okay. Uh, I think, I don't know if that was national or there was some sort of tax that applied and then uh, then it got repealed or dropped or whatever. I would not be the least bit surprised if, you know, this gets done at the state level. If the California state legislature says, hey, you know what, we should be making money off the tourists coming here. How about we impose a tax? You know, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but like I said, it went nowhere. So if you'd heard about that, it's, it went nowhere. So it's, if it does happen, it won't be for a while. Um, my chat, as usual, has some Disneyland updates. They had one from Dusty Sage. Uh, call uh, this is from July 11th called subs surface uh, crowd hack and hammer time da, 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 da. Anyway, uh, it, as he says here it was a Disney coast to coast week for me I that's you know how nice for him I started the week uh, at sea on the new Disney wish cruise ship then stayed a few days at Walt Disney World then rushed over to Disneyland to shoot this news update for you so um, he was talking about the new unique crowd patterns uh, that have been going on this summer mm -hmm. lockout and pricing schedules uh, he says We'll also explore Mighty Thor's arrival, a corresponding Thor's hammer beverage holder, attraction updates, refurbishment schedules, the return of Mickey balloons, and a whole lot more. So they had that update, uh, and they had another update from Dusty Sage on July 18th. Disneyland update 67 years of magic, looking forward and crossing fingers. So, um, yep. Uh, you know, you can click through. Those updates are always really heavy with the photos, uh, so you can get a good look at those. Uh, what you want to do is go to our website, thesweepspot.com, so that you can click through to all of that. And, Lynn, do you have any uh, rehab updates? I do, Ken. <clears throat> I forgot about it. I have it, though. Um, so... Refurbs going on are some of the same ones, and there's some new ones. We have uh, Finding Nemo Submarines come back July 25th. Woohoo! Yeah, that's coming right up here in the next few yeah. weeks. Um, Tarzan's Treehouse still closed, and no really no news on what it's going to be, or if it will just continue to be Tarzan's when it reopens. We don't know. Um, maybe it will be a shop. We don't know. Um, <laughs> Uh, the Red Creek Challenge Trail closes August 1st and will be back on August 20th. Hmm. Um, this is a big one here. Matterhorn Bobsleds close on August 8th and there's no return date yet. Now it's um, just that the calendar only goes so far so they don't have a return date for that. Um, a Haunted Mansion goes down August 15th and I assume it will be back yes it will be back September 2nd so it's closing just for its holiday overlay it's that time of year already Ken <clears throat> just a few weeks here <laughs> wow I know well a month and so um, then the last one Monsters Inc uh, 
will be down August 15th also, and there's no return date on that. That's all I have. All right. All right. Well, that's good. Mm-hmm. Do, uh, are, are our listeners able to keep up with all these changes, I wonder? Because, you know, trolleys back, subs are back. Um, but there's all kinds of things changing still. And the way to handle that is to plan your next Disney getaway vacation with concierge. Now, concierge is our magical vacation planning partners. They focus on Disney. That's all they focus on. So if you want to go to Walt Disney World or go on the go on a Disney cruise, like with a new ship, woohoo, Adventures by Disney, Disney's Alani in Hawaii, or the original Disneyland, the place to go is concierge.com because they specialize in Disney. They're at C-O-N-C-I-E-A-R-S dot com. Go there, check it out, and they'll take a lot of the stress away from planning a getaway vacation. Um, They can get reservations. There's all kinds of great things they can do. Um, They know what's going on. They're keeping up with the changes. And if you tell them that the sweep spot sent you when you book with them and you book a package, like, you know, a week on the cruise or theme park visits at a hotel stay, you know, you book a package with them, say, tell them the sweep spot sent you, and maybe you'll get a special gift if you do that. And heck, maybe Lynn will be your guy. I don't know. I can't guarantee that. But Lynn, Lynn, (laughs) we like them so much, Lynn is working with them now. So, yeah, it's wonderful. Um, But yeah. Thanks to our pals at concierge.com. Sounds good. Up next is the D-180. Hello, everyone. This is Eric Johnson with Concierge, and welcome to the D-180. While Ken and Lynn cover all things Disneyland, in the D-180, we take a spin around the rest of the Disney universe, and we do it in 180 seconds. Let's jump right in. We start our journey in Walt Disney World, where we finally have a release date. No, not for the Tron ride. For the newest plus in the Disney catalog, Magic Band Plus. Most guests are familiar with Magic Bands, the decorative and collectible way to access your park tickets, enter your hotel room, and make purchases. Well, get ready to do even more with your wearables. Magic Band Plus will release on July 27th. The new designs contain color-changing lights, vibrations, gesture recognition, and open up a new realm of interactivity in the parks. The new bands will launch with 25 different designs and sell for about $35. You're sure to find them at each of the four parks at Disney Springs or even at the resort hotels. Hotel guests will also be able to pre-purchase the new bands with a bit of a discount as well. How about those interactive experiences? When the bands launch, there will be three main events. Tying in with the 50th anniversary, you can sprinkle pixie dust over each of the 50 statues commemorating Disney characters and get reactions from them. I have no idea what this means, but it sounds cool. If you like the Play Disney Parks app experiences in Galaxy's Edge, you will love the new Batu Bounty Hunters experience. Search for nefarious characters on the planet. Your band will light up and vibrate to help you find your way and augmented reality in the app will help you capture them. Finally, look forward to interaction with various nighttime spectaculars. The big shows, Disney Enchantment and Harmonious at the Magic Kingdom and Epcot, will sync up with the bands both visually and vibratily. That's a word, right? Vibratily? The four parks Beacons of Light shows will also contain some interactions with the bands. No word yet on when Disneyland is going to get their own magic bands, but this is the first time that Disney has ever committed to bringing the wearables west. Head over to Epcot to enjoy this year's Food and Wine Festival. The fest is open early again this year, no surprise, and runs through November 19th. While there are plenty of favorite dishes hitting the scene, Disney's chefs have replaced about one-third of the menu with new items to try. Grab your festival passport to help guide you through the bevy of options. Remember the year that they put the passport on Facebook and you had to check into kiosks to earn badges? Yeah, and we complain about being on our phones too much nowadays. 
Some of those new experiences include Belgium's kiosk, which will now open early at 8.30. They're ready to satiate that sweet tooth in the morning with waffles, berries, and specialty coffee. There's also a new kiosk called the Fry Basket that offers a flight of French fries. Can't wait to give that one a try. We will, of course, see new festival merch across accessories, apparel, kitchen items, including a very fetch orange bird tote from Loungefly. There's also a new kitchenware collection themed to Princess Tiana and her culinary skills. All right, enough out of you, Walt Disney World. It's time to head back to Disneyland Paris, where their new Avengers campus is officially open. I've covered a fair portion of this before, but it truly is a sight to behold. Take the Disneyland campus and add in the blessing of size. More restaurants. Pim Lab still functions as a kitchen, but there's also a new Stark building serving quality pizzas. More rides. The old rock and roller coaster has become an Avengers adventure with a new Iron Man animatronic. They even host character greetings in a space ringed with cameras designed to capture your coolest superhero poses. Leap in the air with Spider-Man. Do that cool hair flip that Black Widow does. Come up with your own signature move. And then go stay a few nights in the Hotel New York, The Art of Marvel. This newly rethemed and very long titled hotel is packed with comic book art and even more encounters with your favorite heroes. Take that, Disneyland Resort! And that's 180 seconds. I hope you enjoyed our quick spin around the rest of the Disney universe. If you'd like to learn more about these Disney adventures or just have a few questions, please come on over. Visit the social media and websites of both The Sweep Spot and us, their official travel planners, Concy Ears. We look forward to planning something special for you and your family. I'm Eric Johnson, and this has been your D180. Okay, well, that concludes our current events episode. Hope you enjoyed that. And don't miss out on our main topic we're going to have next week. And yes. this, these will come out on Fridays, so um, look for that. Late, late Fridays or early... Well, I guess, yeah. I guess, yeah, we'll Friday. See. Yeah, Friday. We'll see. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, we're trying to make this a weekly thing, you know, current events one week, main topic the next. Let us know if you like that. Um, let us know anything else that you think we should hear about uh, for <laughs> as far as how we're conducting the podcast. Uh, you know, we, we can take it. Um, just let people know we're here. Let them know how to find us. And, uh, you know, they always they can point them to the sweepspot.com if nothing else. So, uh, but we should be easy to find if you just do a search on the sweep spot. Sounds good. Thanks for listening, and we'll talk with you next time.